Hey guys, welcome to Roy Marshall Jiu Jitsu. I'm here at my school, Gracie Schwartzwald in Baden Württemberg. Um, and uh, I wanted to go over a little topic today, which um, I've had to talk to people about many years over teaching. Um, specifically, it's about training with everyone. Um, I don't mean training with different schools or different affiliations, I mean training with everyone in your gym. Uh, so a question I'll get asked a lot, especially by white belts or newer people, um, is they'll say, you know, well, I, I don't want to roll with the upper belts because I don't want to waste their time, or I don't want to train with them because I don't want to waste their time. I feel like I'm, you know, it's 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 uh, not not a good use of their time if I if I take up their time, um, and I always want to really shut that down as soon as possible. Um, when you're training at every belt level, you should train with every belt level. You should train with every weight, every age, um, gender, everything. Um, a saying that uh, I really don't like in Jiu Jitsu is, you know, iron sharpens iron. Um, meaning, you know, if I want to be the best, I'm only going to train with the best. Um, one, it's, it, that's a false assumption. Two, uh, if you want to take that metaphor, a lot of things sharpen iron. Um, cloth sharpens iron, uh, leather, everything. Um, depends um, what you're trying to get out of it. Um, so with jujitsu, um, for me, there's really three categories of guys I want to I roll with. Um, people who aren't as good as me, people who are pretty much comparable, and people who are much better. Um, if you don't train with all three, you're going to be having an incomplete uh, training experience. Um, so I see a lot of guys, they say, well, I don't want to train with guys who are much better than me. Um, the problem is, yes, you'll get good at very certain things, right? If you have a five, when I train with, you know, some of my instructors who could just smash me, yeah, I, I had to really develop a really good guard, um, really good defense. But really, the only offense I mounted was kind of when they let me have offense. And if they weren't going to let me have it, I didn't get it. Um, so if I only trained with those guys, I would be pretty good at, you know, guard. Um, but probably my top game would be really, really weak. Uh, because even if I did manage to get top on them, I wasn't going to be able to explore it at all. I was just going to basically be holding on for dear life. Or try to catch some submission, you know, as quickly as possible. Um, one reason I, I think I do have a very strong top game is because I've been teaching for so long and I've had so many white belts and blue belts to train with. Um, and so, you know, what I used them for was to develop that top game. Um, actually to develop my whole game, but, you know, uh, I would, I would, you know, pass and get on top and, you know, if they escaped, it wasn't a problem because I knew I could pass again whenever I wanted. Now, I wouldn't just smash them, but, you know, what I would do is I would play on top and I would, you know, I had the ease of mind to be able to sort of study the situation and explore and keep my eyes open versus if I'm training with, you know, some of my really competitive partners coming up like uh, Jack Jitsu from Jiu Jitsu Forums or Conrad or guys like that. You know, basically it was more of a fight situation where I was having to be really uh, super focused on not losing position or, you know, uh, making sure I don't, I don't screw up so I didn't have the chance to kind of step back, look around, be very relaxed, you know, may, be willing to make mistakes because I wasn't going to get punished for a mistake against a newer guy um, because I knew I could just correct out of that pretty easily. So I was able to play, you know, try things, see, you know, where to put my weight, uh, see, you know, where to, when to underhook, when not to underhook, you know, different controls, um, and kind of the same with defense, right? You know, if you want to develop a good defense, if you haven't already, you start at white belt. You let them pass, you let them get the grips, you let them get position, and then, you know, you know you can escape, so you, you can focus on escaping correctly. Whereas, you know, if I'm rolling with, you know, uh, some of my really good friends, you know, I... Uh, you may be panicking to escape. You know, be, you may be pushing the uh, pushing the action to try to get out of there because you know they have such a dominant position. Eventually, they're going to work into something. And rather than kind of be willing to make mistakes or you know 
having the vision to lay there and see the openings, uh, you may be pushing the action harder than you really want to. And so, you know, even like I said, with you roll with really good guys, you develop a good defense. It's kind of not. It's more, you know, you're just going to lock down and really defend and you're going to be really explosive in your escapes. So I see guys who train with really good guys and their defense and their escapes are really kind of just explosive and in the moment rather than technically correct. The, the, the saying I say is they'll take the first escape, not necessarily the correct escape. Just because they're, they're thinking, man, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here right now. Um, so any, any upper belt who says to a lower belt, like, yeah, I don't want to train with you. It's a waste of my time. Uh, to me, to some extent, that guy doesn't deserve his belt because um, all the people that helped him get there, I assume, you know, wasted their time with him or her getting to that point. So part of that, his job, his uh, um, duty is to pass that along and take the time to you know, help the lower belts, as well as he's going to learn a ton of things, especially kind of a top game in my mind. Um, and also that's how you learn new guards, right? Um, I don't play a lot of spider guard. If I were to start playing spider guard to, today and I tried it against a, the average purple belt, he's just going to blow through that guard. Um, so, you know, I'll get pretty, uh, pretty frustrated pretty quickly and just throw it out the window. But if I said, you know, okay, I'm going to start with, you know, white belts because, you know, if they do pass the guard, that's okay. I'm going to escape pretty easily, um, if I need to, and I can go right back to it. Um, I do have enough experience that they're not just going to blow through it. I can play with it. I can start to learn it. Um, so those are the guys that you're going to be able to, um, help and also again with defense, right? That's that's huge, right? Let a let a white belt take your back. You know, you're not you can make pretty big mistakes. He's probably not going to exploit them, and you can start to play with things and see like how deep in the hole you could get before you can come out. So you go really deep, you get submitted. The next time you you go a little bit less deep um, until you find that line, um, and then you try with blue belts, you know, purple belts, and on and on and up. Um, so I think it's hugely important that you train with newer people. Plus, it makes it gives them something, right? It's it's uh, if they have a you know a brown belt come over and say, hey, would you like to roll? And you know they don't just get just demolished by the brown belt. They you know the guy lets them work. He plays with them. They're going to feel much more uh, comfortable at that academy and much more invested. And it's going to stick in their brain that later as they get up, they're going to be able to turn back and do the same thing. Versus, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, there's times where it's your journey, you know, part of your job as a white belt is to get just completely smashed. Um, there's no way around that. Uh, I was rolling with a n newer guy the other day, and you know, he's saying, oh, I, can't, I can't breathe, I can't deal with this, how do, I, how do I deal with this? And I told him that's, you know, unfortunately that's part of the journey is you've got to start, you know, you'll learn how to get into positions where you're not going to carry the weight, but part of it is you just got to deal with getting, you know, crushed, submitted, all these things as part of the journey, um, and especially at white belt. It never goes away, but especially at white belt. But, you know, there's also the idea of, you know, training with an upper belt and seeing that, uh, you know, he's going to let you work, he's going he's gonna to get something out of the role, not just a, a chance to beat somebody down, but he's experimenting too. So maybe that reinforces your mind that, you know, when I train, I should be experimenting, I should be exploring. And then you should train with guys uh, also like comparable level. And you'll have those guys, if you come up in jiu-jitsu, there's always your training partners that come up with you. And those are really good chances to kind of put your A game to the test, um, especially if they know you. That's when it gets really, uh, depending on your worldview, fun or boring. For me, it's always fun. Like they, they know what I'm good at. They really can focus on shutting it down preemptively. So I have to get really laser sharp on being able to impose my game or um, you know take them to positions outside their game it kind of becomes a meta battle um, I always joke about I had a friend of mine Al he was a kind of exact opposite of me tall we were both brown belts I think at the time tall love to pass from the outside love spider guard where I'm exact the opposite I like to be very close uh, play butterfly guard um, I'm not tall and uh, what it came down to wasn't so much 
you know, whose technique was better. It was who could set the battle, who could decide which battle we were fighting, his battle or my battle. And uh, that really taught me a lot about sort of, you know, strategy versus just in the moment tactics. Um, so a lot of uh, what I do when I train is I, I, I always try to uh, investigate my opponent first before we even roll and then as we roll. Uh, what is it he likes to do? What positions is he trying to get to? Um, what do what are the what are the threats he uh, gives me? What are his weaknesses? Um, versus just I like me like Kimura, me try to rip Kimura. Um, so that's something that you can really uh, I think get a, a ton out of. Now again, you're not going to be able to kind of relax and experiment necessarily. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some guys I had, a friend of mine, uh, Jason Wingate, we would have very kind of flow roll kind of things where we had just moved through a lot of positions. Um, ego wasn't really tied up in it. And you'll definitely have those training partners too. Uh, but it was still very competitive. And then, of course, the last is, you know, what most people think they want, which is just, you know, world champion black belt to smash me every day. Um, and that, you know, has its place because, you know, you... If you have weaknesses in your guard, if you have weaknesses in your defense, um, you're definitely gonna get it pointed out and exploited to you. Um, I, I remember one time rolling with my instructor, Jason Colbreth, and we'd been going at it for like 15, it was like a 15, 20 minute straight roll, super hard. And I felt really good, I wasn't making any mistakes, everything was on point. And I remember just making this one mistake, like my elbow was out of place or something, I don't remember. And I actually remember in my head thinking, man, I hope he doesn't see this. And right as that thought was getting in my head, he, he caught it, right? It was just literally just like a half second mistake. But he's good enough that he was able to see it, feel it, and exploit it right away. Um, and, you know, you won't get that from necessarily the guys kind of at your level or, you know, new people. So there is that training uh, that you, you want uh, to put, you know. Your goal is to help everybody at the academy and your goal is to learn from everybody at the academy. And if you can't or you aren't, that's on you. That's not on anybody else. Um, so, you know, take that brand new person if you're an upper belt, you know, train with them, roll with them, you know, uh, see what you can learn. Also because rolling with new people, um, I'm going to do a, a, a video about this later, but something that... Um, uh, I think a huge fallacy in jiu-jitsu is people will say, well, I only need to train for really good trained guys. I don't have to worry about untrained guys. And that's completely a fallacy, right? Um, because the trained good guy is not just a better version of the untrained guy. Okay? Often they're using completely different tools, right? So whereas, um, you know, from a purely you know, fight perspective of what I'll talk about later, it's, you know, if you're trying to pass a, a really good black belt guard, open guard, what's he going to be doing? He's going to be trying to get grips, maybe daily heave a spider, things like that. An untrained guy, guy who walks in off the street, he's going to try to kick you in the face and stand up. Those are two different, very, very two different realities. So if you're focused on the, all the time about like getting my grips, making sure my posture is for, it's not going to help you against a boot in the face, unless you're training to deal with that boot in the face. Um, so it's not that it's, you know, a better version of something. It's two guys who are doing two different tools. Now, obviously, if you train really good grapplers, you're used to learning how to control people. You'll be able to adjust to an extent. But again, it is a, just because you can escape a triangle, if you don't train to defend a punch, it doesn't mean, oh, well, I can also defend a punch because I, I escaped this really good brown belt triangle. There's two very different realities. Um, so what I'm saying is if you take a guy who's, you know, a brand new white belt, and I've seen this before, guys who can hold down purple belts from mount, who get thrown off mount from a white belt. Why is that? Because the purple belt, he's spending all his time maybe trying to do a knee elbow escape or switch like a deep half guard escape, or he's trying to do all these little technical escapes. Uh, whereas a strong white belt just grabs you and throws you off. So if all your mount has kind of been kind of this very quick reactive light kind of mount because uh, you're anticipating his movement uh, of the purple belt um, and then somebody just comes in and mongos you off of them uh, and you haven't trained to like 
hold a tight, heavy mount against a really strong guy, then yeah, that untrained guy is giving you a different experience and a valuable experience um, versus just, you know, I'm only gonna train with guys who are gonna do these technical escapes. Um, so, you know, it allows me to train against the guy who's just super strong, who's trying to swing me off, as well as the guy who's got a really slick, you know, knee elbow escape and everything in between. So, um, you know, if you really want to improve your training, uh, you know, grab everybody, everybody. Um, you know, train with women as much as possible. Uh, almost every single woman I've trained with um, back in the U.S., uh, here as well, but, you know, the ones in the U.S. and North Carolina where a lot of them were very, you know, high-ranked, were all really super technical because they have to be. They can, you know, by and large, they can't... Um, rely on strength to get them out of problems. So they've always you know, gotten themselves in bad positions and had to escape technically. Um, as well as, you know, sometimes body mechanics are different. You know, uh, being able to pin, uh, you know, a guy, a big guy in a certain way, it might not necessarily work as well against, uh, you know, a woman who's got, uh, you know, different uh, mobilities. Um, you know, I train with you know, I had trained with young kids, when I say young, you know, 13, 14, 15, super flexible kids, you know, that can be a, tough to uh, hold down. And then, of course, just the, trying to hold some of the polar bears down, like uh, Brian Sully, one of my students back home. It's a whole different thing. Um, so, you know, in general, what you're going to focus on with jujitsu is guard, passing guard, submission, submission escape, pins, escaping pins. Um, and so, uh, you know, you want to be able to be good at both sides of those, and you want to put yourself in a position where you train with people where you can experiment on both sides of those, where you can be tested on both sides of those, and where you can be completely crushed on both sides of those. So I um, hope this video helps, and, um, you know, make sure not to be that guy who thinks he's too good to train with other people or only wants to train with world champions. All right, thanks.